Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Getting better looking by the getting younger and better looking by the day, I'm told. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about some of my annoyances with filtered indexes and computed columns. Uh, granted, there are uh, more than this, but this is, this is just a, a one that um, even a very casual observer uh, may find quite annoying. Uh, and mostly it has to do with the expression, expression matching abilities of SQL Server's query execution engine. Um, mostly in that it's, it's very hard for it to, it's, well actually not hard, uh, it is not quite, it is not currently implemented in SQL Server's query optimizer to uh, be able to use inverse logic and still match expressions to things. It's really annoying. So we're, we're going to talk about that. Um, as usual, uh, if, if you would like to, to support this channel, uh, there are very low cost memberships. Uh, I think the, the entry level one is like four bucks a month. Uh, and that's a, that, that's a great way to keep from commercials <laughs> making their way into the Darling Data ecosystem. Uh, if, if for some reason you're unable to, to partake in a $4 a month or more subscription, uh, then great ways to show your support are likes and comments and subscribes because those numbers going up uh, make me just as happy as uh, my, my, um, my, my monthly earnings going up, which right now are at uh, $30 and 70 something cents. So, uh, you know, I think the, the bare minimum for a deposit from YouTube is a hundred bucks. So uh, every four or so months, uh, I, I see, I get a hundred dollars from, from this channel. So uh, the, the other stuff is, the other numbers going up is, is equally as gratifying. We're not, we're not talking millions here. <laughs> So uh, if you need help with SQL Server from a consulting point of view, uh, from a man with a slightly itchy eye, uh, th this is the kind of stuff that I normally do. Health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning, responding to SQL Server emergencies, and uh, developer training. If you need something else, give me a holler. We can talk about something else. But this is the stuff that I, I typically help clients with. Uh, if you need low-cost SQL Server training, you can get all 24 hours of mine for about... Uh, 150 US dollars uh, with the discount code spring cleaning. Of course, if you just click on the link in the, the video description, you will, you will get a direct link that, that, that applies that coupon code for you. So uh, you, can, you can do that. Uh, some upcoming events. Um, Friday, September 6th, I will be at Data Saturday Dallas uh, doing a full day pre-con. And uh, November 4th and 5th, of, of course, I will be at Past Data Summit uh, splitting uh, well, I mean, like, I have, like, two pre-cons each day split with Kendra Little. So, uh, November 4th and November 5th, me and Kendra will be double tag-teaming some, uh, some uh, pre-con material for all of you lovely folks out there who can show up in Seattle. Now, let's get on with my annoyances with filtered indexes and computed columns. Uh, we're going to start over in my crap database and we're going to create a table called is deleted. Uh, it's just kind of a transient jump table that I'm going to use to show you my first annoyance with these things. Uh, I'm not creating it in the Stack Overflow database uh, because I always forget to get rid of these things and then I have a bunch of tables that I don't want or need in the Stack Overflow database. And we're just going to stick some data in there uh, using the sys.messages um, built-in built uh, DMB table where SQL Server holds all the error messages that SQL Server has in them. Uh, if, you're, if you're ever exploring uh, a new or different version of SQL Server, um, looking for new error messages is a, is a really fun thing to do. You find all sorts of new things. Uh, um, you also find lots of typos and grammatical errors and incomplete error messages and really unhelpful error messages. Um, the, the quality of Microsoft everything has slowly been like on this like, decline. Uh, some of it more like this, other of it kind of like a step pattern. Uh, but the quality of error messages has, has really been eating it over the last few years. Um, <clears throat> some of the error messages that you get, you're just like, I, I can't possibly do anything with that. How do I, how do I fix this? So now we're going to create an index <clears throat> on this table that obeys all of the rules that filtered indexes need to uh, obey in order for... Uh, us to be able to use them efficiently. Uh, and mostly that is that um, 
the, the we're, we're creating this filtered index on the column DT. Uh, we're including the is deleted column so it, that it is part of the index definition. And we have our where clause to where is deleted equals zero here because no one needs to see things that are deleted. So uh, if I were to say zero equals, um, oh, sorry, if I, if I were to say um, zero equals is deleted like in this one, we would do just fine. I'll, sh I'll show you all this stuff in a second. But if you use the sort of inverse logic and you say, not one equals is deleted, or you say is deleted not equal to one, or anything like this, uh, SQL Server will just say, um, well, that's nice, but uh, I'm just gonna scan the clustered index instead of using your filtered index instead. Now granted, for a table with 300,000 rows in it, not, it's not gonna be a big performance hit. This is just to show you the behavior that I'm annoyed with. Uh, you can imagine where this would be annoying to you in real life on much bigger tables, uh, particularly where, you know, uh, is deleted equal to zero is a, is a fairly sizable portion of the, of the table data. Or like, you know, like I talked about in the um, considerations for soft elites video, uh, maybe where you've set up some sort of view or something in order to get back the data you care about. We even go a step further here. And if we uh, hint the index on is deleted, the ISD index on is deleted, uh, and we tell SQL Server, please use this index. You, it is a perfectly feasible, usable index to satisfy this, pre this where clause. Uh, it, SQL Server will throw an error, an optimizer error. The query processor, I'm on Zoom at Ketchup. The query processor cannot produce a query plan. Wow, <laughs> it's, it's just, no. Nah. It freaks out that hard about things. It's it's kind of ridiculous that this is still something that people have to deal with here in the year 2024. Of course, if we just say, "Hey, um, pretty please, uh, let's just let's just write this the the, the correct way," uh, then then SQL Server will uh, seek into our non-clustered index and, and find those not deleted records. So uh, that's my first annoyance: is the optimizer is just not geared to use like the inverse logic to still be able to like use a filtered index, even though exactly what you're asking for is in that filtered index. That that it's a bit column, right? There is no no two ways about it. Uh, another thing that I find quite annoying uh, is in relation to computed columns. Now, computed columns have nearly the same problem. Uh, in this case, let's say that we wanted to look at who has a lot of upvotes in the Stack Overflow database. Uh, this is just a short, um, short query to show you that there are there are actually people who who up and downvote things a lot, including whoever ID negative one is. That seems like a really powerful user, and of course. Well, you know what, this, this create index statement, we're gonna, I'm going to start running that, but then I'm going to move it up here because it, it, should, it should really be up here because right? this is the important thing. Uh, but if we look at the query plan for this, now I've talked about this before where uh, it's sort of like a SARG ability thing, right? Search argument ability. It, this is one of those patterns that ruins search argument ability f for queries, right? If you concatenate two columns, in this case, we're adding integer, two integer values together. Even with a perfect index in place on upvotes and downvotes, SQL Server doesn't track that particular correlation, right? It knows the values in upvotes and they're, they're in order and it knows the values in downvotes and for, you know, for duplicate values and upvotes, their downvotes are ordered in there, but it's not tracking what upvotes plus downvotes equals. Right? So there's no way we can seek to that data. The best that we can do is scan through that data, add upvotes and downvotes together, and then see who has more than 1,000 of them. This should actually be 10,000, I think. Let's make this not 10. That's not a zero. That's an O. Uh, if we run this, uh, we'll get a slightly lower number, but it'll still be the same deal. Uh, we scanned the entire index that we created on upvotes and downvotes. We had to read all 2.4 million columns. Uh, all, all, sorry, all, all 2.4 million rows, add those columns together and then figure out if the result of that matched our, uh, was, you know, uh, was correct for our predicate, right? So this plus this is greater than 10,000, right? Best index in the world still doesn't beat that. Now, what you can do is you can create a computed column and you can, without, even without persisting it, right? Notice there is no persisted in here. Uh, even without persisting it, you can uh, index that computed column, 
right? Another thing that slips by a lot of people is that even with, like even if you don't persist a com computed column, you can still get statistics generated on it, uh, which is nice, right? Because you know, persisting computed columns on big tables can be kind of painful. Uh, but if you go and create an index on that column, then you will, thankfully, uh, write that out. There will, no be, there will no longer be a virtual column in this index. It's still a virtual column in the clustered index or the table if it's, you don't have a clustered index. But in this index, all those values are written down. They are permanent day in there. So if we run this and we search for upvotes plus downvotes is greater than 10,000, we will get a nice index seek into our non-clustered index. It will be quick and fun and painless. But if we mix up the column order in that, and we say downvotes plus upvotes is greater than 10,000, SQL Server can no longer figure out just what the heck to do with itself. We are back to scanning the clustered index, reading all 2.4 some odd million rows, and figuring out how to add those columns together and what predict and like you know what they equal. So. When you're using computed columns and filtered indexes, uh, do try to write them in a way, and I just want to add, if we tried to hint that non-clustered index up there, we would get the same query process error that we saw with the, uh, the filtered index example that came first. So when you're, write, when you're making computed columns, you're making filtered indexes, uh, make sure that uh, whatever queries you want to use them uh, are the basis for those computed columns and filtered indexes. Uh, if you have a bunch of different, if you have a bunch of different sort of query forms that sometimes look for things on slightly different arrangements, SQL Server will a not be able to match them directly to the computed column or filtered index, but b you'll get an optimizer error if you try to tell it to. So those are the two things to be very careful about with filtered indexes and computed columns, is making sure that they adhere to the queries as they're written. Or you're gonna, or how you're going to write the queries in the future, or how you you're planning on rewriting the queries to match these things so that they actually work together. So, those are a couple things that I find annoying. Actually, it's kind of one thing that I find annoying about both of them, isn't it? Same problem, twice. Uh, same pro one problem, two different facilities in SQL Server, two different uh, arrangements where things are things are things are not good. So, thank you for watching. Uh, remember, all this stuff, like, subscribe, comment, hire me, all that good stuff. Um, I, I have training, and uh, I'm going to be doing live things. If you've forgotten any of the details there, you can rewind the video and watch the little uh, housekeeping section at the beginning where I talk about all that stuff. Uh, for now, uh, I'm going to go, uh, well, apparently I have a call starting in a couple minutes, so I'm going to go do that. And then uh, I have to record 7 million more videos to, uh, to, fill, to make sure that things uh, stay, stay flowing in a nice, even pace. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm time to go pay the bills, as they say. All right. Goodbye.